You just have no energy for art. What if there's a bigger issue? And what if it's sabotaging your art? And today I want to teach you all of the sabotaging types of tire that make you think that you have no energy for your artwork, how to recognize them, and how to combat them so that you can be the best artist that you can. So beware of this, my friends. Now, how would you like to know the most common energy thief? Because most of the time you're going to be like, Sean, I'm just way too tired. I'm way too sleepy. I just, I've got nothing left in this tank right here, right? But look, most of the time, it's not even that. So to give you an example of this, I want you to just think about how do you feel when you have to do something that you just can't stand? Like it's go to work, like it's do some errands, like you have to do chores. How does that make you feel just thinking about that? Just saying that I have to do this, I can't stand that anymore. So what do all these have in common? You have intense opposition to them. Whenever you have opposition to doing anything, you feel an intense lack of energy towards it. It just sucks all the life from you, doesn't it? I have witnessed more artists not do as well as they could or not tap into their fullest potential, even when they say they're tired, when really what they're just feeling is intense friction towards starting, intense friction towards doing more, intense friction towards tapping into their potential just a little bit more, just to challenge themselves just a little bit more. So as we go through this whole video, I want you to just ask yourself this, which version of resistance am I currently feeling? Because that's really where your problem lies 99% of the time. It's not actually physically tired. And I just want to put this into another perspective for you too, if you think that this perhaps isn't aligned to you. Imagine that you're a boxer, all right? And if you are in any type of pugilistic sport, any pugilistic activities, then you'll know that fighting is exhausting, right? And it takes everything out of you. Similarly, when you have to fight against what you have to do and what you want to do, what you need to do, what you know is gonna be best for you, you're actually not fighting against that force. You're actually fighting against what could be the most amazing version of yourself. You're fighting your creative potential. And the reason why this is so hard is actually just because growth is difficult for us and it's uncomfortable for us and it's not gonna be easy for us. And because of that though, you might wanna consider this. Are you just fighting the best version of yourself to sustain the potentially worst version of yourself? Have you ever considered that? Now, just to add some credence to what a minority of you might feel, and you're gonna be surprised to learn how easy it is to overcome this, I'm gonna relate this back to when I was in college and I worked in a garden center. And after an entire day of working outside in the sun, in the heat, throwing around stones and dirt and mulch, I used to come home and I would feel really physically exhausted. And if you're in any type of physically demanding job, maybe if you're in a manual labor job and you still wanna be an artist friend, that ship has not sailed for you, don't worry about it. But look, here's the thing that I wanna let you know is that yes, yeah, sometimes you will feel physically tired, especially if you're sick and especially if you have just completed a physically demanding task. But here's what I wanna let you know. This is actually the easiest to remedy. But when you're feeling physically tired, really easy to overcome this, my friends. And it's typically just gonna involve you taking a break, you taking a rest, an actual rest, like I'm gonna outline because most people do this wrong, for at least 30 minutes to an hour. And that's all you need to just kind of refresh, just to recalibrate yourself, okay? Now listen, when I say take a break, take a rest, take a nap, okay? Here's what most of you are gonna do totally wrong, is that you're going to combine this with screen time. And I mean video games, TV, phones, anything that has a glowing blue screen, you can't do that, okay? And this is usually where people get totally pissed off and they absolutely can't handle this. But let me tell you why. Because anytime that you are in front of a screen, you are not involved in what's called deep rest. And that is when you actually let your brain take a break along with your body. And if you're not allowing both of those systems to actually reset themselves, then you're not gonna actually feel any type of benefit from it at all. Here's also a reason why, is that whenever you are looking at a screen, screens are meant, by the way, to stimulate you, to keep you hooked, to keep you looking longer, and to prevent your brain from actually taking any type of rest and just our overstimulated little monkey brains. We love some good stimulation. We love some entertainment. So if you are going to say that you're too tired for art, my advice for you is this, is that you need to engross yourself into some more deep rest activities. And this can take the form of, yes, you take a nap or you go sit outside and you just take in all of mother nature, okay? Maybe you also, here's another thought too, maybe you're physically tired 
because you're actually not physically active. Like sometimes I come home from work and I am just dog tired. And then my sons will come up to me and be like, daddy, can we go for a bike ride? And I'll be like, oh, okay. And then as soon as I get back from that, I feel more supercharged because I'm actually doing something physical and I'm feeling my blood pumping and it's actually forcing me to wake back up. So you need to think about if you're feeling this way and that is your opposition towards making more artwork, well, Maybe you need to have some physical activity in your life to actually make you feel like you physically accomplished something or you actually need to take some more deep breaths. So tell me which one do you think you are? Now the next type of tired I can best relate to when I actually used to use Rosetta Stone to learn another language. About 10 years ago, I got Rosetta Stone and I wanted to learn Japanese because I've always wanted to go to Japan. I know, that's so basic of an artist, right? But that was my dream and uh, someday I'll do that. But I remember this very well, is that honestly, just from like 30 minutes to 45 minutes, man, I would feel so exhausted. And do you have certain tasks that you have to do that just seem to just take all the wind out of your sails, even if it's not that long? And here's what the next type of tired actually is. You are actually not physically tired, but you're mentally tired because your brain is the most energy consuming organism in your entire body. And honestly, y'all, in case you didn't know this, your brain is an incredibly lazy beast. It does not like to think. It does not like to do new things. It does not like for you to push it. Your brain does best when it is on autopilot. Just think about this. How many times have you driven somewhere and then you wake up and you're just like, whoa, how did I get here? Like you just subconsciously navigated yourself to work in like 30 to 45 minutes and you're like, what? How? I don't even remember getting here, right? Why is that? Because your brain just is used to developing and finding patterns. And when you have to disrupt that and it actually has to, you know, work for itself, then it generally doesn't like that. And then it uses a lot more energy, a lot more resources, and therefore you feel tired from it. This can also take the form, if you're a parent, by the way, you're gonna relate to me real hard on this, but just decision-making fatigue. Like for example, like when my kids just want something and they just badger, 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 okay? Then you start to develop decision-making fatigue. And that is also something that those of you that are at high pressure uh, jobs, you're gonna feel this way too, because when you're engaged in really rigorous mental activity, um, your brain really wants to cool down. So then how can you combat this? That's a really important question because if your brain is overstimulated, how are you therefore supposed to sit down and engross yourself into an even more mentally rigorous activity? You can revive your actual physical energy by doing a physical task and then jumping into your artwork. So what am I saying here? Why don't you just take like 10 to 20 minutes and do something physical? You want to shift the brain from having to think a lot from it having to do a lot because movement is your body's natural state and it's your natural function. So can you go for a walk? Can you go for a jog? Can you go for a hike? Can you do a walking pad? Can you do a 10 minute workout on YouTube? Can you do some push-ups, some crunches, some sit-ups? Like just think about simple things that you can do to interrupt that state to bring you into a more productive artistic state. And then once you're done with that, boom, get yourself some water and sit down and start to create. Because when you are shifting your Yourself, like kind of like a car you're shifting from oh I'm feeling mentally tired to oh now I'm gonna shift into a physical state and then I'm gonna shift into an artistic state it's gonna be a lot easier for you to do that now the next thing that's gonna definitely totally siphon your energy is if you don't hit that like and subscribe button because I'm here to help you to empower you to teach you how to be the best possible artist that you can and I would love for you to help and support me back like that and hey look maybe you've been trying this for a while and you know this stuff already but you just can't implement it and that's where my one-on-one -on -one art mentorship comes into play listen this is not a course it's not a class it's me and you work on one-on-one -on -one to accomplish the things that you want to do at the pace you want to do it I've helped people People just like you totally supercharge their art business and be able to achieve everything that they didn't think they'd be able to do for years in a matter of months. And if that sounds like you, then go ahead and check out the link in my description, fill out the form, and I'll reach out to you soon. Now watch out for this energy demon next. Now this next one typically ties into your mental health a bit. And I just want to ask you, have you ever noticed how the way that you're feeling can make you feel way more exhausted than if you just did an intense Ironman workout? And what I tend to notice is that whenever you are enveloped in your feelings, is that that tends to just creep all through you and just infect you just like a fungus would. So this is often one that I see is 
honestly the cause of a lot of artistic death. And it's sad for me to see that because when you're dealing with emotional exhaustion, it seems like it's insurmountable. Like you have to lay down, you have to go to a deep, dark place. You have to just stay in that. So I want to offer you this advice, my friend, is that you staying into that space or you having to think about your emotion, that's only going to further envelop you in that darkness, into that current emotional cloud that you're feeling. By just sitting there and ruminating it, it will do nothing for you. You can say to yourself, well, I just really need to think my way through my depression and anxiety. But I promise you this, you give yourself a day, a week, a month, a year, you're still gonna be there and you're gonna be there even worse because now you have created a pattern of you having to think like that. Here's the thing I just wanna let you know is that staying in that state is never gonna bring you out of that state. So what can you do about this? Right now, my friend, you are currently just really high on emotion and really low on logic, okay? And the one question I wanna ask for you is this, why do you value your feelings more than you value your future? And just so you don't get this twisted, I'm not saying that you shouldn't feel the way that you feel, nor should you totally ignore your emotions. But let's be real and honest, are you currently overwhelmed with positivity right now? Are you currently overwhelmed with positive emotions? Are you like, wow, Sean, I just can't stand it, man. I'm just so happy. I'm just giggling and skipping around everywhere. Heck no, you're not. You're like, I'm sad, I'm depressed, I'm anxious, I'm overwhelmed. I feel tired because of all of this, right? Okay, so why is that? Because you're putting a lot of focus onto feeling that way instead of what you could be doing. And if you stay stuck in what you're doing, and how you're currently feeling and how you're currently thinking about the way that you're feeling, it will only further deepen the level that you feel that way. It will never take you out of that, my friend, because I see amazing creative potential in you and you've got a great artistic future. And at the core, here's what you need to know is that you're currently stuck in a negative thought pattern and you need to get out of that if you want to supersede those feelings because you will feel just as tired from running a marathon as you will from running with your emotions. This next type of tired, I can relate to back from when I was a kid and I had one of my first jobs, which I was a cashier. And if you are a cashier or if you have any type of just basic kind of like intro level job, I bet you're gonna feel this pretty hard right there because when I was a cashier, right? I could work for eight hours and you just feel that drag, don't you? And you literally feel time ticking slower, like 10 times slower than anything else. And when you're in that, like, I just wanna ask you, like how hard are you really working when you're in that type of job? Maybe you have a desk setting, maybe you are in some type of an office setting, right? And uh, like, how, how hard are you really working? And then you come home and you're just like, oh, I'm toast, I'm so exhausted, right? Here's the problem with that. Let me ask you this. When you're doing that type of job, when you're engrossed in that type of labor, um, are you really interested in it? Because I'm just gonna go on a limb and say, you're probably not that interested in it. And that promotes then the next type of tired, which is from disinterest. When you are disinterested in something, your brain just kind of goes into autopilot mode. And this is when it just, instead of you actually utilizing your brain and utilizing your resources in your body, you're instead just promoting homeostasis. In other words, just this state of you just living. And I remember like, I could literally just mentally coast through an entire day of work back then. I've had many jobs like that before my current one. And especially when you start to bring that into your artwork, you enter that at a super, super low state. Those of you that are in school, I'm talking to you right now. Can you relate to this one? Like, do you remember just going through school days and you're just like, oh, okay, whatever. Is it time to go yet? Because you're not that interested in it. And being disinterested makes you extremely exhausted in it because you just feel Feel like you're wasting your time, don't you? And then when you bring that into your artwork, you're gonna be like, oh man, I'm not that interested in this anymore. Or have you ever found yourself losing interest in your art? Okay, so how do we combat this, all right? Number one is that if you are coming home from a day where you are doing things that are just completely disinteresting to you, engross yourself in things that actually do interest you. Think about what's a quick study that I can do right now. What can I do right now that's gonna bring me into a higher interest level? What can I do right now that I actually do enjoy doing? What I mean by that is artistically. What 
practices can you start to develop right now that's actually going to produce that combative result for you? And the thing to I think about a lot with this one is those of you that might be in art school or went to art school. When I went to art school, I used to notice that professors would generally give us really broad guidelines for projects and then people would inevitably turn in the lamest crap possible because they never even cared and they weren't interested in it. And the way that I've always combated this, by the way, in any artistic project that I do, whether it be for a class or for a client, for a commission, okay, is this. You have to find ownership in everything that you are doing artistically. And for those of you that are freelancing, hear me out big time. You have to find a way to challenge yourself in everything that you're doing so that you actually are interested in it. Like for me, even though I'm given sometimes a spec that I don't like to do for my freelance business, I'll always find a way to insert something that I really want to do, something that I want to learn, something new for me, something that I'm actually quite interested in doing. So then that way it spurs me on. So in your current artwork, I just want to ask you this too. Are you actually doing things that are spurring your interest or are you just spinning the wheels to look like an artist when in fact you just don't love what you're trying to do right now? Have you ever thought about that? Now, since we're all artists, I bet you can relate to this. When you're doing tasks, that aren't associated with what you actually want to do with this artistic thing? Do you ever feel a little empty? Do you ever feel like you're missing out? And do you feel like, most importantly, you're not fulfilling your creative side? Well then, you can feel right now creative exhaustion, okay? This is when you are feeling like you're not fulfilling your purpose, you're not fulfilling that creative means through which you are feeling a calling right now. And the curious part that I always notice about this is that so many of us feel like creativity is some type of gift or it's some type of magically bestowed blessing upon certain people or some people are just born more creative than others, even though there's really no evidence that actually definitely poignantly suggests this. Um, we'll feel like it's an option, but I wanna challenge that with you right now. In every single day of your life, you should find something creative to do. Even if it's not necessarily art making, even if you're just a hobbyist, hear me out. Creativity is not an option. Creativity is actually a default of being a human being. You have in your genetic makeup, you have the compulsion to want to create. Just think about this. When you were a kid, you loved to draw and everybody loves to draw. I've never met a young child that does not really love their art. But what's sad is that by the time most people hit middle school and especially high school, they have completely been hammered out of the joy and the value of making artwork. And they have actually learned to suppress their creative intent, their creative impulses. But you as an artist, you're at that point and you're trying to. So one of the worst things that you can do is talk yourself out of it and talk yourself out of tasks that have nothing to do with your creative ends. Now, here's a really big thing too. If you're feeling like you're missing out because you're not doing artwork, first off, I would encourage you to do this. First off, track your time. Like how much time are you actually making art in a week? And I say in a week because honestly, real talk, you can't do it in a day every single day. I don't make art every single day. I, I do a lot of artistic things every single day. Like I teach art and I coach and I mentor people. And then I'm also like doing creative things like editing videos like this, but I don't do it every single day, but most of you will feel bad for what you don't do in a day, but not as bad as what you could have done in an entire month or year. So instead of you looking at what can I do in a day, look at it like this in a broader spectrum, what can I do in a week? Like how many hours do you wanna make artwork in a week? And I bet you can definitely hit that because anytime I've ever asked anybody that's in my art mentorship to do this, they're always surprised at how much time they actually fit in versus what they don't fit in in a day. The other thing too, is I just wanna ask you this, how much time are you dedicating towards things that you actually don't care about? You know, your errands and your chores and your appointments and your work, you're putting more energy into things that you don't care about than the things that you do care about. So why don't you switch that paradigm? What can you do to bring more time, energy, focus, and attention into the tasks that you actually care about that you actually want to engage in? Remember that it's part of your humanity to want to explore that and to want to engage with it. And by not scratching your creative itch, it exhausts you because you're not fulfilling yourself. Next, let's go ahead and let's talk about 
Who's somebody that you can't stand in your life? Come on, you've got one, I know you do. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you've got more than a handful of them. You probably got a whole bag of people that you absolutely can't stand, right? And I think about this best, like from all the jobs that I've had, uh, maybe you've got some family that you just absolutely cannot stand to be around. Have you ever been in the presence of somebody and they just suck the life out of you? Like when you're done, you can even talk to them for five minutes and then you just lean back afterwards and you're just like, oh my God. That was terrible. I will never get those minutes back from my life. It's like watching a bad movie, isn't it? Well, I just wanna let you know that that's probably the next culprit of what's actually stealing your energy is the people around you. Have you ever thought that you just have human siphons? You just have these people that are completely draining the energy from you, that aren't serving you, that aren't helping you, and they serve absolutely no purpose in your life whatsoever, but you have to put up with them right now, or at least you think you do. So for those people that you absolutely can't stand in your life, here's a hot take that I'm gonna give you that is actually gonna radically change your life, my friend is keep a smaller circle and keep a more curated circle of people. Really ask yourself, especially as y'all grow into adulthood, if you're like a teenager watching this, if you're somebody who's just living with people that you absolutely can't stand, I just wanna let you know this. You don't have to keep your circle all throughout life. You don't have to keep your friends all throughout life. And contrary to what you might think or what you've been told or conditioned to think, friend, you don't have to keep family members in your life either. Like just to be real, there are family members that I grew up with that I don't talk to anymore because it exhausts me to be around them. They bring nothing but negativity and stress and anxiety and just promote a poorer quality of life just by being around them. And just because you were born with somebody or just because you used to hang with somebody back when you were younger, when you were less informed, when you were less seasoned in life, does not shackle you to them for the rest of your life. And usually when people are on the receiving end of this, they'll be like, oh man, well you've changed or you know, this isn't cool or like, oh man, we've always been together. But look, just to be honest with you, why do you want to imprison yourself with the inmates for absolutely no reason other than the fact that you've just spent some period of time with them? Why do you want to have the people in your life be a life sentence for you when you're free to walk out of that jail cell anytime that you want? The people that are gonna come and go in your life should always be the ones that support you and not to say that they're the ones that are going to enable whatever you do, but the ones that generally support and love you, they're gonna be the ones to keep in. Otherwise, think about this. How can you totally disconnect from them? How can you avoid them? Or if they're people that you absolutely can't get out of your life, how can you minimize them as well? By implementing this strategy, you're gonna feel a lot more energy and you're gonna feel like you have a lot less excuses to get down to your artwork because you'll actually regain that energy. How's that sound? Do you do this? Do you have anybody in your life that absolutely sucks the energy? Because y'all gotta get away from these human hoovers. They suck, literally. For the next type of tired, do you know somebody who works a job that they absolutely can't stand? Do you know somebody that maybe they went to college for something and it sounded really great for them and now they're in that field and they just come home every single day and they're just miserable and they're exhausted and they have no energy in them. I think this happens a lot with parents. Parents feel this overwhelming obligation and I can feel this as well as a parent and as a spouse to provide. And they think to themselves, well, look, I went to school for this thing or I studied this thing for a few years or I've already been in this for 10 years. Uh, there's no point in me switching. There's no point in me starting over anywhere else. Why does that happen? Why do they then come home and they're miserable and they're in a bad mood and maybe they fight and argue and they're snippy with other people? Why is that? Because now you've encountered what is one of the worst types of tired, which is your soul tired. Because you're not doing anything that actually ignites you. Because what you're currently doing is a complete passion misalignment. And this is all too common and there are way too many people, I'll say, and I'll cite from being an educator for over a decade, who are just pushed into fields that they think are gonna be lucrative and somehow that paycheck is going to give them purpose, but it won't because it's actually the opposite. Your passion will produce your paycheck if you can do it right, if you can do it by living aligned and if you can not have a short-term version of what that looks like. And the thing that I always notice is this, why do so many of us say something to the effect of like, oh, well, I'm 32 years old. I've been doing this already my whole life. 
There's no point in changing. Okay, so let's math that out here. So you're telling me at the age of 32 that you want to continue for another 25 to 35 to maybe 40 years of you doing the same thing that just kills and crushes your soul? Why do you want to do that? Maybe if that's your case, friend, maybe it would be worth it for you to get out of that soul crushing atmosphere and do something that you like or something that could be different or something that allowed you to have more time. Now, here's a contrary way that we can look at this too. I'm not saying that you should just go ahead and quit your job and be an artist because real talk, that's not going to work out for a lot of you here. But how can you view this at least more positively? You can view this in one of two ways. It's great when your passion is your paycheck. Okay. So like for me, I've always been involved in artistic fields. I've always been involved in an art business. I've been doing this literally since I graduated from college and I went to college for art too. I went to college to be an art teacher. So I've always done this and that's been amazing for me. However, though, here's the opposite end of that spectrum, which I think a lot of you will more so fall under, which is that what if you started to view your current job, your current field as something that fuels your passion. You could look at it instead saying like, oh man, I hate this, I'd rather be an artist. Okay, but what if that paycheck allows you to be an artist? What if that paycheck allows you to afford the things that you need, it allows you to get the tech that you want, it allows you to get the new things that you want, it allows you to get the materials that you want. Because if you view it as a privilege for you to be able to work and receive that paycheck and therefore be able to use it to fuel your creative endeavors, you feel a lot less resentment towards it. And then you're going to feel a lot better coming home from that every single day. The other thing I would ask for you is maybe you need to think about what's my transition plan. It's never going to be a fast one, by the way, but like, Hey, what's my two to five year plan to get out of this and into that? Think about that because if you don't start to make some type of effort to either overcome your resistance to it and overcome your mood from it, which again ties into emotional exhaustion, then you're going to stay stuck in this. Moving on. The next one is not going to even be felt from you until it's too late because you're going to hit this tipping point and then you're going to realize that your current efforts are something that you totally despise. What I'm talking about right now is the culprit of your energy that's really nasty and it just sets in this guilt that just burrows down into your soul. And this ties into what you're currently doing in your current efforts in your artwork because that hole comes from this and it stems from this issue is that have you ever thought that you're not challenging yourself? Because literally, we're so trained nowadays to look at other things for simulation, to look at media, to look at games, to look at TV, to look for anything in the world to distract us, to numb us from what we're currently doing. That sometimes we transfer that into your art. And sometimes you think that what you're doing right now is moving a needle, is gonna bring you to a place, but actually you're just sitting there on the edge of your comfort zone or you're just sitting in your comfort zone art. And if you're always doing the same thing over and over and over again, people might tell you this, Jeb, just stick with it. Have you ever been told that? Hey, just stick with it. Just keep going, man. Don't get off that horse. I want to tell you this, though. That's complete crap advice a lot of the time, because if you just stick with it and you're not doing challenging things, you're not doing new things, you're not trying new strategies, you're not doing things that are outside your zone of comfort, then that's what got you here in the first place. Your brain loves to be stimulated. And if you're not artistically stimulating yourself via challenges, then what you're doing is you're depriving yourself of your growth potential. And that exhausts you. And you won't realize that until you're too late, until you're like 10 years down the road and you're just like, oh, I've been doing the same thing for this long, or I've been doing that same technique for this long. I've been doing that same process for this long, or I wish I was like that, but uh, now I see it's because it's too late now. Unfortunately, time grants wisdom, and most of the time that wisdom brings guilt of what we wish that we did or we didn't do. So if you can control that, you can temper that by inserting challenges into everything that you're doing henceforth, you are going to be miles above where you currently are, my friend, down the road. Now, if you're a hobbyist, you can still execute this too, by the way, this isn't just for hardcore artists, okay? But just think about this, like what's something new, what's something fun, what's something exciting? Just ask yourself this, what is something comfortably challenging that I could step into that maybe I have it? Or if you're really looking to improve, ask yourself this too, what do you never do? Like I have a whole sketchbook just full of things that I used to never ever draw. Like I used to draw like, churches and like destroy buildings and food and like certain types of animals and insects and stuff. And I found that that really helped me because I want to let you know this friend, there's no such thing as a waste of time in art, but there is a waste of potential in art. And that comes and that stems from you 
not pushing yourself just a little bit out of your comfort zone because your brain's a real lazy creature. Now, if you're like totally lost, you have no idea how to really combat this and you're just like, Sean, man, I just, I come home every single night and I'm too tired and I'm too distracted and I don't have the systems and I don't have any type of proper discipline to do art. I've got an entire video for you right here that's gonna blast away everything that you're currently feeling. So go check it out and if this helped you, please tell someone about it and share it with them. See you next time.